What's up YouTube, it's Matthew here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you all the top list to pull from ProStream in your real estate business, whether you're flipping properties, wholesaling, or looking for some rental properties to build up your portfolio. Now, I've done videos like this before in the past. I do all the research for you all. So I look at mortgage rates, I look at the inflation rate, I look at foreclosure rates, I look at home sales. I do all the research so you don't have to go out and do that yourself. Yes, I still recommend you all to do your own research, but I'm able to compile all my research together and put it into a video format. So if you all find value from this video and you wanna support this channel, check out the link down below, the PropStream link down below with my link. You can get a seven free day trial and, and this is the software that I'm using to pull lists to find off market properties to either wholesale or to hold as a rental property. So be sure to check the link down below or in the comments down below for PropStream. Now, understanding seasonality in your business is key, right? Because you're not going to be targeting the same people during Christmas time that you are in July, right? It may be a little bit different. The marketing may be different, especially if you're sending out postcards. Maybe you have more of a holiday theme postcard, or maybe you're just looking for different people during that specific time, right? And these summer months are coming in, and you know, the real estate market really heats up during the summer months. So how do you set yourself apart? How do you know which list to go after that a lot of other real estate investors are not going after? So I'm just going to share my screen, share the data with you all, and they were going to drill into PropStream and look for those specific lists. So I'm going to share with you all three lists that I would target this month and most of the summer months on PropStream. All right, you all, so I'm on this website where it talked about Encore reports um, about their business. So Encore, they provide uh, electric for millions of homes across the country. It's the fifth largest utility company in the United States and number one in Texas. So this, this is very interesting because it can show you a lot of data about the real estate market because you need electric to power houses, right? And this is something that I, I found interesting was that they said in their, um, if you look here, uh, Encore connected approximately 16,000 additional um, premises to the grid in the first quarter of 2022. So this is talking about new construction. So they were talking about how, yeah, new construction, there's been like supply issues, but overall we've seen an increase in powering more new construction homes at the moment. And so I think this is so important to look at like a utility company to understand which list to target, right? Because um, if, if people are, or if this company is increasing the amount of um, electric that they're powering new construction, then you know new construction is increasing, right? And so with that, I would like to say that the list that I wanna first talk about that you should target is land, right? So why land deals? Obviously, you need land to build new construction, right? And it could be commercial land. Don't only go for residential land. Go for like all types of lands that you, you all can find in order to wholesale to developers, to find hedge fund buyers, to find people who build new construction. Like everyone is building new construction. Even like average investors, they usually stick to buy and holds uh, or, or just fixing already, you know, dated properties, right? And they shifted to new construction because they found, hey, I can make more of a profit. I can do this and that. I might as well do new construction homes. And so where you come in as a wholesaler, you can provide them with land deals, right? And even like me, because I'm, I'm, I'm transitioning to um, trying to buy buy and holds, right? And, and I have a property under contract that I I am attempting to burr it, right? Buy the pro property, renovate it, uh, rent it out, refinance it, and then repeat the process. And so uh, I've been talking to some contractors and number one, they're hard to find. And then the ones that I do talk to or get in contact with, they tell me, hey, we're out of the rehab business. We're only doing new construction. So new construction is the way to go. So let's go into PropStream right here. 
and let's just type in a city, Chattanooga, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to property characteristic. And then from here, you can just type in land, right? And just see what comes up, right? They have agricultural land, they have rec recreational land, they have residential, they have vacant land. And this is really what you wanna target, this vacant land right here, right? And so let's go first to residential vacant land because most likely that would be the most popular one. Um, and then I'll go multifamily land. I don't even know if that will make a difference. It doesn't. Uh, commercial vacant land. That made a huge difference. Um, and then those were the, those would be the main, uh, vacant land general, whatever that means. Um, vacant land general, I think it's those, look, you see these new constructions on the side? You see them? You see these new construction? You see? So I would, I'd probably take this out and see what shows up because I think some of them are still reading that they're vacant land, but obviously there are properties on these lands now. Um, so yeah, but I would just keep it like that, you all. And most of the time, land is pretty cheap. And if they have a loan on it, it's still not to the amount that you can still make money and wholesale it. So like, even like if you would want to do like equity or something like that, if you wanna, uh, make sure they own like 50% of it. Like they can, they can still owe a lot of money on it, but because land is so low, you can still work that deal and wholesale it. But um, let's say they own at least 30% of, of it and see what shows up. Okay, and it's 1200. So you have a list of 1200. So you can write, you know, you can put this for any other city, any other uh, county or zip code in your area. So the first list is vacant land. Make sure you all check the link down below for PropStream once again, so you can use this awesome tool to easily find off-market land deals to sell to investors, to developers, uh, because new construction is increasing. Um, this is another article that I read uh, that despite supply chain and inflation related issues, the 2022 construction season brings great opportunity for skilled trade job seekers. So in this article, they were just talking about an increase in these type of jobs like plumbers, like uh, electricians, painters, all these all these people have been, or these jobs have been increasing, employment has been increasing, right? Because number one, people need it and they've been being filled. So this is another proof saying that, hey, go for new construction homes, go for land deals. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is foreclosures. So month after month, um, quarter after quarter, this has been increasing, right? Foreclosure rates. It's still not to the level that it was pre-pandemic, but month after month, it's been increasing. So we can read right here, it says the first quarter of 2022, it's up 39% from the previous quarter. So from the last quarter of 2021, it's up 39%. And this is um, properties with a foreclosure filing, right? And then it's, it's up 132% from a year ago. So that's back in 2021 around this time. Uh, and it's just some things to highlight is that um, uh, states with the highest foreclosure rates, right? Uh, so, so the number one one was Illinois, then you had New Jersey, then you had South Carolina, Delaware, and Ohio. So if you're in these states, this may be a very good list to target pre-foreclosures. Uh, let's go to a chart. So you see like right here um, during the downturn, the, the 2008, 2009 market crash, obviously foreclosures were at an all time high. It leveled out um, and then you see how it dropped in quarter two this low and that's because of the pandemic. Uh, it's been steady, but third quarter of 2021, that's when it started to increase it. And it, that's why you see this big increase right here. And this is foreclosure start. So this is counting pre-foreclosures that you can go in, help a seller avoid pre-foreclosures. So that would be the next thing. Go after pre-foreclosures. And so what I would do here, I would just go over here. I think they may have a quick list and just click pre-foreclosures. They already have a quick list option for that. And let me take the equity option out because pre-foreclosures. Yeah. And so they have some properties here. 
Um, another thing that you can do to get to look at pre foreclosures is go over here, look at um, notice of default right here. Or uh, what else do they have? I thought they would have other things. But yeah, usually you can go here, look at, oh, liens has an active lien in it or something like that. Um, but yeah, usually here, let me go to a bigger city for you guys. Let me see Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Because usually if you go here, yeah, notice the default and then it shows 61. But if you go here, it shows 331. So I would probably use the quick list option if I were you all. So that's another option that you all can do. Just use that option over there. So that's the third, uh, second list is pre foreclosure. So the next list, I just wanted to share some stats with you all about the housing market and this will lead us to our final list. So spring and summer home sales yield best days of the year to sell a home, right? So uh, they said that May is the top month to sell homes at a premium. So if you're a seller, which we're investors, we're the ones buying it. So just understand that sellers are wanting a higher premium, a higher price for their property. Um, and so you can offer a little bit higher if you can sell in the summer still, right? If you can uh, sell it to another um, cash buyer or whatnot, or quickly fl flip it before the summer ends. Uh, so just making adjustments to your formula to copying properties that, hey, it's the summer months. I know sellers are going to ask for maybe 5 to 10% more. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do. Buyers, cash buyers understand this and everything. Um, and then the other thing is I'm going, this other article says home flips increase, but profits decline across the U.S. So numbers of home flipped in the United States rise to highest level in 15 years. Profit margins on flip homes drop at an unusually fast pace. Percentage of flip home flips purchased with cash increase. All right, so there's a lot of things here. So number one, houses being flips have increased, even though the profit margins have decreased a little bit, but it's not too much. And then the percentage of flips that are happening are being bought in cash. And that's good because you're looking for cash buyers to buy these properties, right? That you provide for them. Right, so you know more and more cash buyers are coming onto the market. This should increase your price for your house, right? The home sales are increasing. Um, you have a larger buyer's list. People are buying with cash. So you have more options to sell or sign your deal at a higher price. And so with that information, I'm going to go to our classic high equity owner occupied property, either owner occupied or absentee. So for example, it can be any, right? Or we can even go specifically owner occupied. Let's let's try to go like super niche, super filtered down. So Atlanta, Georgia, it has over 300,000 houses here on PropStream. And so we're going to make sure it's owner occupied, right? We're not going after the landlord. So now it brings it down almost 140,000 to 190, right? You don't care if it's occupied or vacant right now. Uh, and you're going to really drill down, make sure it's a residential property, which is shit most of them should be because people ain't living anywhere. And then we're just going to keep single family. Let's keep condos. Let's keep these multifamilies. All right, cool. So next, MLS status. So we don't want them to be on the market, right? We don't want them to be on the market. All right, next thing, ownership information. We want people who own their properties for a while. So I'm going to say like 12 years or more, right? They had their appreciation. They had everything happening. And I may even increase this even more, right? So next thing is um, let's go to valuation and equity. So we want a high equity, right? We want something really high on the equity scale. Uh, and so I'm going to go as high as 75% equity minimum. And we brought into it's twenty thousand properties that fit this criteria. What else would I would drill? I'll probably go up to fifteen years for this, right? Uh, owner type. I want an individual, not a corporate own. Um, what else? What else can we do? Uh, we, 
uh, maximum properties own. I don't want them to own more than two properties. I don't want to go after landlords, right? Uh, what else would I do? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can go for vacant. Let's see how many are just 77. Obviously, so it's obviously much lower. But any is fine. And yeah, so I would look at this list. You know, high equity, owner occupied properties, go very niche, try to get the, the, the number as low as you can, you all. Um, if you need to increase this owner to owner years of ownership to 20, do that also. All right, you all, hope you all enjoyed this video of the top three lists to pull from PropStream this month, May of 2022. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and make sure you check out the link down below to get your seven free day trial of PropStream using my link. All right, talk to you all later.